Hey guys, so what we're going to take a look at this week is wave demand replenishment. So what is wave demand replenishment? Normally in a warehouse, you're going to use some replenishment method, for example, like min-max, where you're going to set a min-max on the shelf and, and do a regular replenishment of your picking shelf from your bulk locations. What the wave demand replenishment allows you to do is to, in between these other min-max replenishments, let's say during the day uh, a shelf is, is or a location is picked down to, to uh the shelf is empty and um, you release a sales order and that sales order tries to go pick the inventory from that location it can't do it because there's not enough stock what the wave demand replacement will do instead of that um, just giving you a blank location or empty location or can't find if you're lo depending on your location directive setup it will create a replenishment uh, work record to move an item from bulk over into the shelf so then it can be picked okay so let's take a look at how that's set up First place we're going to do go is we're going to go look at our wave templates. So I'm going to go under warehouse management setup, and then if we look at the waves, we'll go into the wave templates. Now today I'm going to use warehouse 64, uh, so I'm just going to filter everything down to 64. And for warehouse 64, I've I've only got one wave template set up. And the important piece here is this this little method right here, replenish. So I, I've added this in. Um, to the methods, and I've also given it a wave step code. The wave step code is going to help us identify the uh, replenishment template in just a minute. So the first step here is just to get the replenishment method in here. And the other thing that you want to make sure you have checked on this uh, wave template is this automatic replenishment. You want to make sure that's a yes. Okay. So the next step is that we're going to go create a work template for this. So we're going to go to warehouse management, and we're going to go to work, and then work templates. And then we're going to go ahead and select replenishment. So on this one here, I've got a very simple work template. You can make these as complicated as you'd like, but I've got uh, one called replenishment 64 for wave demand replenishment. And I just have a simple pick and a put. So remember on your work templates, you just always have to have a pick and a put. All right. So the next setup we want to take a look at is the replenishment template. All right. So if I go back to warehouse management, and go to setup and then replenishment and then replenishment templates. Um, if I look down here, this one here's my my uh, wave demand template for 60 warehouse 64. Uh, the replenishment type is going to be wave demand. Here's my wave step code that I specified in the wave template there. So this is where you're going to specify that, and this that's what joins these two together. The other thing I have checked here is cancel um, re replenishment if de demand has been canceled. So this will cancel this replenishment if that demand gets canceled. And down here in the details, um, the important things that we have down here are a unit of measure. Um, so now I'm specifying in each unit of measure on this one. Uh, in the blog post, I mentioned um, a, a different method where you can specify different uh, a unit of measure to basically stock the shelf back up to max. But in this case, my setup will just, if I need one on a sales order, it will it's going to do a replenishment of one on my sales order. Um and then you have the work template that we created earlier, which is that replenishment 64. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our location directives. So we're going to go to warehouse management again. We're going to go to setup and then we're going to look at our location directives. And again, I'm going to filter down for to uh, 64 and I do need to change my work order type to replenishment. And let me filter that one more time. Great. All right, so I've got three um, three location directives. I've got a pick and two puts. So the pick is basically just going to pick it from bulk. All right, so I've got a got an action here that's for fixed and non-fixed locations. If I go and look at the query, I've got a location profile ID specified of bulk. So I only want to pick this stuff from from bulk. All right, and then the puts. I've got two puts here. And the only difference between the two is one of them is for multiple SKUs and one of them is for, for single SKUs. But they're, other than that, they're both exactly the same. So if we look at the actions on this one, we're either going to first look for a fixed location to put it to, and then it will look for a fixed or non-fixed location. So if we look at the, there's no query change on the fixed location, but on the fixed or non-fixed location here, there is a query change where I've said, okay, I only want to put this into a pick location. So I don't want to move it from a bulk to another bulk. I want to specifically move it from a pick, from a bulk to a pick location. So that's going to be the only change there. 
All right, so that concludes the setup. Let's go into uh, sales orders. So we'll go to my, my all sales order screen and we'll create a new one. All right, account we're gonna use is US-003, which is Forest Wholesales. Oh. All right, and then I'm gonna change my uh, site and warehouse here to my warehouse 64. And the item I'm gonna to use today is an L0006. And we'll just put the quantity of one there. So if we take a look at the inventory on this one, so I'll go open up the inventory and take a look at the on hand. And we should see that all of my inventory right now is gonna be in this bulk one location. So this bulk one location is just a, a bulk location. The actual uh, fixed location for this product is this gonna be this pick five. Okay, so, but all of my inventory right now is in bulk one. I don't have anything in, in pick five as of right now. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll release this to the warehouse. So we'll go to warehouse and release to warehouse. And we'll take a look at what messages we get. All right, so the message we get is that uh, we, we basically get our wave and we get our work created and everything. But what you'll see is that the work can't be unfrozen because there's replenishment work. All right, so what does that mean? Let's go take a look at the actual work that was created. So we're gonna go into warehouse management and we're gonna go to all work. And I've got two, um, two pieces of work that got created, okay? So the first piece of work we have here is a replenishment. So if we go into that one and look at it first, we'll see that we have our L0006 and we're gonna pick it from bulk and put it to uh, location pick five, all right? So that's our replenishment work. And then, and that's, that was created by our wave demand replenishment. And then if we look at the actual sales picking, we'll come in here and so it's gonna say pick uh, from our location pick five and then move it to bay door. The other thing I'll point out on this sales, sales order picking um, work is you see it, it's blocked. Right, So if a user was gonna go and try and pick this work, they would not be able to. So let me just show you that. And I'll use the device portal to show you that. So I've copied that work and let's go to the outbound menu and we'll go into sales picking and I'll put that work ID in. And then we'll see the current work is frozen. So when, when the work has replenishment tied to it, it's not gonna let, um, let you pick it. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll get our, um, our other work, our sales order work here, our replenishment work. And we'll get that going. So let's go pick this item here. So on my menu, the uh, the replenishment is under inventory and replenishment. All right, there's my, it's gonna ask me for my work ID. I'm gonna enter that in and say, okay. So what it's gonna ask me to do is pick it from bulk and the item is L0006, and it's going to ask me to move, take one for bulk, and we'll say OK. And it's going to tell me to put it into the pick uh, 5 location for the L0006. I'll say OK there. All right, so that's our replenishment done. So if we go back and look at our all work, there's our replenishment line. Let's refresh this, and we should see that disappeared because that's closed work now. And now our only work that's left is the sales picking work. So we'll copy that one. And let's go and do our picking work now. So if you remember before, when we went to this and did our sales picking, we weren't able to pick it because it was locked. Now when we put that in and hit OK, it should allow us to pick it. All right, there it goes. So we've got pick uh, from pick five. Uh, I'm gonna add a license plate to that. It's got 600 there. And it's asked me for one of those. I'm gonna say OK. And then it's gonna ask me to put it to the bay door. And I'm gonna say OK. All right, so that's an overall process of, of using the wave demand replenishment. Very helpful if you're using other replenishment methods to keep your stock in the middle of the day, keep your picking locations updated. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks.